Hey everyone, it's Caleb with Antique Book Collective, and today I'm going to be bringing to you guys uh, Don't Price Yourself Out of Business. So, uh, simply put, there are two ways that you can price yourself out of business in uh, the antique business uh, and in any business in general, basically. And uh, the first is pricing yourself too high. You can price yourself so high that no one ends up buying your book. And the second way that you can price yourself out of business is by pricing yourself too low. Obviously, you can uh, do either end of the spectrum and totally ruin yourself. Uh, there's always the sweet spot in the middle. Uh, that sweet spot can be just one price or a range of prices. It really varies. But you really have to find what the best price is and what you're comfortable making. Uh, of course, you can make huge multiples on your money, especially if you're buying low enough. But you don't want to price yourself way too high or else seriously guys you will not be selling anything because no one's going to want your book your book's not going to be as desirable because it's not going to be as affordable so when affordability is down that means your uh, population your target audience that sort of stuff that the amount of people that can get it is down as well so you really have to keep that in mind when you're selling certain books so uh, with all that said and done I'm going to show you guys a screen share of a cool little case study uh, from my own personal experience so there we go all right, so as you guys can see right here, I have uh, the search in on eBay for the Time Machine First Edition. And again, as I've said before, eBay is where I do all of my shopping around for comps, which is uh, comparable things, so comparable uh, in condition, in price, that sort of stuff. And from those things, you're supposed to gauge roughly what you want to charge for your book. And uh, for me, I actually had a first edition of The Time Machine. It's one of the books that I got from Goodwill Outlet. I've mentioned it several times because uh, it's been my bestseller ever for uh, profit and for all those other things. So uh, just to dive right on in, I want to just scroll on down, show you guys what we're looking at. So there are three actual first editions and then there's some spammy stuff that isn't actually what we want to go for. And uh, when you're doing eBay, I want to tell you guys, there will be a whole lot of spammy stuff like this that is not going to be on point. Uh, here is something that's interesting. Uh, it looks like, oh, it's not actually the book. I thought it was interesting, though, because the price, and you will find out liars like that, that the price is just way too low. And obviously, in this case, it's something not real. And then you can see here it's brand new because uh, it's a poster that they printed. But yeah, you want to base your stuff off of what is actually what you're selling. And as you can see here, there uh, is nothing beyond that, so that means the only first editions of The Time Machine, which is a book from 1895, the only first editions are these three, which is actually pretty crazy. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, I'm actually a little sad about this because I was hoping to find a uh, one of the Time Machines that I actually had just checked on last month because this particular copy of it was actually on sale back when I had mine, which was about three or four years ago, I believe. And that means this person has been hanging on to this book for four years. So that's crazy. And the reason why they've been hanging on to it that long is because they priced themselves out of business. They were asking for $13,000 for it. And as you can see here, this person for a hardcover uh, version is asking just $5,500. This person is asking $8,500, and this person is asking for $6,000. So that's less than half of what the other, per other person's asking for, except for this person. I mean, that's a pretty substantial difference, yes? And the answer is yes. Um, so as you can see here, uh, the price does vary on which exact one it is. So you have this one with the little sphinx on it. Uh, Sphinx, whatever. Uh, this one, I can't remember what this one's icon actually is. Uh, as you can see, it's faded, so I can't see. Uh, but it, then you also have this one, which is the hardcover. Uh, as you can see also, so this one's a cloth bound. This one's not quite the same. It's different. Um, I think this one is actually better quality than the, than the cloth bound right below it. But the cloth bound right below it is actually the one that I had. I didn't have that specific one, most likely. Uh, I actually think this is one of the ones that was for sale when I was selling mine. Uh, I'm pretty confident this one and this one are, but I think this one was. But that's what I was looking at when I was selling mine. I was like, oh man, I could charge thousands and thousands of dollars. But I didn't ask for that. What did I ask for? I asked for uh, 1600 bucks. I might have asked a little bit more, but I ended up selling it at 1600 something like that. But the reason why I decided I only wanted $1,600 was I was like, well, 
for my me, uh, my book had a stain on it, so it wasn't as pristine as other ones. As you can see, this one's not pristine whatsoever. Uh, this one's not very pretty either. But I mean, it's like, eh, it's not pristine. I know it's a first edition. So, I mean, I really did charge a whole lot, and it's a very popular book. If you guys haven't heard of it, you're probably not a science fiction fan, and you probably haven't read a lot of H.G. Wells' books, but H.G. Wells is actually a really popular author. He's been around. His books have been around for, as you can see, over 100 years, so he's sort of a big deal. Uh, so I asked for $1,600 for several reasons, but the biggest reason was I wanted to move the book. I didn't want to hold on to it forever. Uh, part of me wanted to... Like, I was even talking to my parents, I was talking to several other people, I was like, hey, do you think I should, like, try to find some professionals to, like, clean the book, repair the book, do all this, and then, like, send it to an auction house? Because, I mean, I could have gotten maybe $10,000, I don't know for sure. But at the end of the day, I was like, I paid, I think, uh, the Goodwill outlet that I have by me, I think they charge $2.29 for their books, and I got my first edition of The Time Machine. This book right here that you can ask for $8,500 for. I paid $2.29 for it. So I'm sitting here like, well, let me just pull out my little calculator. Hmm, $2.29. Well, I most I've ever sold a book for was like $800. So what if I sold it for $800? So $800. And then let's do that. Well, if I sold it for $800, that's almost 350 times on my money. But I was like, but this book's worth more than that. I mean, I know it's worth more than that. So I was like, well, let's charge 1600 because I felt like 1600 was a fair price back in that time. And I still think it was a fair price. And honestly, I'm still so happy that I actually had that book in my hand because I think it was the first science fiction book that I ever read. And science fiction is one of my favorite genres. So, I mean, it's so cool to hold that piece of history in my hands. But $1,600, so that's what I sold it for. That is almost 700 times on my money. Almost. And I'm pretty sure everyone here would be willing to trade one dollar for seven hundred dollars, you know, or in my case, the two twenty nine for sixteen hundred. And that's the kind of profit that you can make consistently on books. I mean, maybe not quite that much, but you can consistently make several times on your money. So as I've said before, I don't like selling books for anything less than twenty five dollars. I try to shoot for thirty five as my minimum, and by and large, I'm buying these books for $1 or $2, so to consistently be selling books for $25 to $35, that's a good multiple on my money. But I'm actually normally selling books for more than that, sometimes substantially more, as this whole time machine thing sort of uh, tells you guys. So let me go back out of this uh, screen share really quick, so see you in a bit. So as I said in that little video there, I mean, I have been holding on to some books for a little while, but most of them I price to sell. I'm here to sell the books. I'm not here to hold on to them forever. And it's really important to me that I keep selling the books. And to keep selling books, I have to keep my profit margins not as big as they could be. I mean, I could be charging that $8,500 that I uh, mentioned earlier. I could have been making that much more money on what I paid. But I wanted to move the book. I wanted to have those $1,600 coming back to me sooner rather than later. When I got that back to me, I was able to go and buy more books. I was able to buy a few more tools for my business. I was able to reinvest that money a whole lot faster, which meant I could expand my business faster. Because when I got that book, it was very early on in my business as a whole, and I needed the money. I started on my shoestring budget like I'm sure a lot of you guys are starting. I mean, I wasn't starting on very much money at all, but I had to start somewhere. And I was like, well, I've started. I've made some money. I was actually making enough money to more than meet my needs, but I needed those $1,600 to really take my business to the next level. I was able to buy a few more tools, as I already mentioned. I was able to work on all sorts of stuff, and it really helped me out in the long run. Yes, I would have loved to have $8,500. It would have helped me on one of my larger goals that I have. Uh, I've been doing this business, uh, Antique Books, in an effort to buy land, and this, if I had $8,500, that definitely would have actually bought me some land, but I wanted to move up my business first. So there's all of that. And it really all just boils back down to don't price yourself out of business, but don't charge so little that you can't help yourself, you know? Like for me, the $1,600, it really helped me move my business ahead. And yes, I could have made more, but I could have priced myself out of selling the book. And I'd rather have 1600 than nothing and still have the book. Well, actually, maybe I still would have wanted that book. 
So, so bad example, but you guys get where I'm going at. So for me, the margins was what I was playing with. I was thinking about what I really wanted to make. I was thinking about what I needed, all that sort of stuff. And at the end of the day, I mean, I think I sold that book in less than a week because there were buyers out there that were really excited to see my book. And I actually uh, know for a fact that the person that bought this particular book uh, was a resale person that would buy it and then sell it to someone else down in the future because they have their own eBay store where they're selling antique books, that sort of thing. Uh, that happens a whole lot to me because I don't charge a whole lot for my books. I charge an, like a chunk less than everyone else. Sometimes I know for a fact I'm selling less than a quarter of other people because I am making my great margins because I'm buying for a dollar, I'm buying for two dollars, and I'm selling for ten times that, twenty times that. And it really just is how you want to play with your uh, finances. Long story short, I mean, you guys are free to do it however you want. Don't try to undercut everyone all the time. Uh, personally, I wouldn't, tr I wouldn't try doing anything less than like maybe 60% of what everyone else is doing. Honestly, I end up doing more like 90%. So if someone's asking for $10, I might ask 9 uh, Bad example, because again, I don't do anything under like 25 to 35 in general. But again, just easy math. If they're asking 10, I wouldn't recommend doing anything less than 9 because at that point you start getting like a war of attrition to get the price lower and lower and lower. And once it gets low enough, I mean, that ruins the entire market for all of us. So we have to make sure we don't ruin and crash the prices. So don't try to undercut people too much. Just try to keep it right near there. Or in my example, if it's a really expensive book, maybe you can undercut them and just expect it to be sold to another resale person who's going to sell that book for a whole lot more. Uh, maybe... In some uh, cases, as I've mentioned earlier, there are books that get their covers ripped off, all that sort of stuff. You could sell just the text block, uh, which is where all the pages are. That's called the text block. You can sell just that, and there will be people that buy them because they might have a cover. They might have the means to make a cover, something like that. And their value is in what you have, basically. And you have to price accordingly if your book's totally destroyed, but there's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can price to sell. You can price to sell to retail people which is just normal customers or you could uh sorry you could try to price just to sell to normal customers or or to businesses which is uh business to business not business customer just business terms there but yeah it really depends on who you want to sell to how you want to sell it and it just seriously guys like there is so much wiggle room that you can do with your businesses that you don't need a price to only make a dollar on a book like for me when i did fba i mean i was doing stuff so i made like five dollars on a book and it's like wow, I just went through all that work to make $5 profit. Whereas here with this business, uh, Antique Books, you know, I'm selling books for $50, $100, $1,600 as my example. Uh, sorry to make this video so long. I mean, I know this is such a simple topic, but I just really wanted to flesh things out here a lot more. So I hope this video really helped you guys. I hope you guys can go out there and buy some Antique Books because if you don't buy them, they're going to the dump. So help me save all the Antique Books we can. See you in the next video.